All right, what shall we talk about? I'm still waiting for my permit for the crane superstructure. And uh, most importantly, I'm still waiting for my FedEx shipment from uh, Mighty Products. Those four new fancy binders, uh, 20 foot chain and uh, two slip hooks. So I can make, uh, I can cut the chain into four or five pieces and so I will have four binders, four chains. And my chains right now are six and 10. And so I'm, I'm tracking the shipment. It's somewhere nearby, uh, even though I placed the order Friday, today is already Tuesday. And I complained and they said, well, uh, our processing time is 24 hours and we no longer process orders on the weekend, right? And so because of that Friday, so they took whole Monday to process. And then uh, I was checking this morning, uh, this four piece shipment, pretty heavy stuff, right? These binders, they're pretty heavy. Uh, got shipped this morning at 3 a.m. from Ohio, 244 miles away only. So I'm very close to their uh, warehouse. Hold on. So what we're going to talk about is uh, it's always it's always a good idea to pick up a, vi uh, a topic for a video, which is something you're passionate about. And recently I've been very interested again in uh, trailer specs, you know, like what's wrong with my trailer? What can I, I what can I improve? You know how I can make more money. And so today we're talking about how to spec a heavy haul trailer for Canada and US. So grab your pens and pieces of paper, grab your popcorn. So this should be interesting. First off, I, I did like an outline over here. So the basic setup, right? The basic setup, I, I would not recommend to, uh, to do heavy haul uh, with less than seven axles, right? And seven axles um, is, uh, is a basically a four axle truck and three axle trailer and you can you can get the last axle a flip flip axle right so it can go up when you don't need it and then you you go down but you definitely need at least seven axles and the four axle truck can be a truck like mine with a lift axle it can be or a easier way if you already have a truck and you don't want to pay like ten thousand dollars for a lift axle um is to buy a single axle Jeep. Some people are big fans of Jeeps because they're more universally acceptable in more parts of the US and Canada because all jurisdictions are different. Um, but lift axles in general, I like them better because it's always with you. Lift axles way less than a single axle Jeep, so which is very important. You will know why in a second and um, and they cost less right so it's like let's say on a brand new truck a lift axle would be let's say ten thousand dollars extra uh, doesn't matter Canadian US like whenever you're buying your truck but if you're buying a single axle Jeep it like a brand new one you're not gonna get for less than 20k um, and so yeah so they're more expensive they're they're bigger they're more headache to deal with but they work pretty much anywhere like you know western canada for example right i go to western canada they don't recognize the lift axle on my truck i can go there but i have to lift it so i'm losing you know the capacity right whereas uh, a single axle jeep you can you can uh, you can take loads pretty much anywhere i don't know anything about california i don't go there so california can be different um and uh, one last drawback about single axle jeeps versus the compared to uh, to lift axle is that uh, the way it's designed right the way the single axle jeep is designed like, it, it looks like this right it looks like this shape and so the fifth wheel is always taller than your fifth wheel on the truck right and so whereas a tandem jeep right Tandem Jeep looks like this, so it has this drop like a step deck, right? So 
with a tandem Jeep, your fifth wheel is the same height or lower than on your truck, so you're not losing anything in terms of height. But with a single axle Jeep, you gotta be careful because your overall height will jump up by about five, six inches. And the one way out of this is that if you like running with single axle Jeeps, you just spec your trailers. You know, when you buy a new uh, RGN, a double drop trailer, you spec the fifth wheel on that trailer accordingly. You make it taller. And then, you know, if it's a hydraulic trailer, you end up with the same height. Uh, so basically you can compensate for that, but still I just don't like this single axle Jeep. I looked into this uh, But anyway, so that's the basic premise right the basic premise it does not matter What's the rating of your trailer is nobody cares if it's a 30 ton 40 ton 70 ton people look at axles and tires, right? So let's say you have a basic truck and you just have 12,000 pound axle right and then you have uh, and then you will get under permit most typically 60 over here 20 per axle and you will get 60 over here 20 20 20 right so 60 and 60 120 so you get 132,000 pounds gross right under a permit if you're hauling a heavy load with a four axle truck and three axle trailer so minus your empty weight let's say if this is a basic truck it's gonna but it has a lift axle so probably gonna be like 23k somewhere there and uh, the trailer let's say the trailer is 20k because the you know rgn and low boys they're very they're very heavy so that and that's how much you can haul right uh again all jurisdictions are different some some crazy places will give you like michigan you can get twenty four thousand per axle right uh some places can give you thirty thousand per axle but the whole idea, the principle is this, you take your axles and you apply your axle weight and then you deduct your, your, um, you deduct your empty weight. So in this case, right, 132 minus 23 for the truck minus 20 for the trailer and we end up with 89,000 pounds, right? And that's why it's a big myth saying that you need a 55 ton or whatever right so nine that's 90,000 so that's a 45 ton trailer can do this okay okay 50 just make it a bit uh you know more robust sturdier but but also one thing about all these trailers is that the um the higher the rating is of the trailer the heavier the trailer is because of course they have to put more steel in there right so a 50 ton is heavier than 40 ton and if you paid attention during this little calculation empty weight is very important and so you know in this scenario right so if the truck is 23 and all you can do is 132 gross so the truck is 23 and the trailer is 20 and then let's say you bought a truck like mine which has a double frame and has a big Cummins engine so now this one is 27,000 pounds that's the empty weight of my truck and let's say the trailer you bought a 60 ton trailer which is uh how much is mine uh 27 33 i think mine is 33 right no 30 33 yeah let's say 30 with three axles so my trailer is 30. okay so now instead of 89,000 pounds all you can do is 132 minus 27 for the truck and minus 30 for the trailer all you can do is 75,000 pounds. So you might as well uh, get a 35 ton trailer and a light truck. You see, like it basically defeats the purpose when you go, when you become very heavy. And, but you need to be heavy for heavy loads. And I'll talk about this in a second, but so empty weight is very important. And so if your truck is empty, light and you have a light trailer, pretty much you can do lots of good things with a 45, 45 or 50 ton trailer just keep it light keep it as light as possible that's advice number one and advice number two is um, start with seven axles you know either lift axle on the truck or or a single axle jeep and um, of course you gotta be you gotta spec it properly so you can hook up that jeep right and the neck should be a certain length but we'll talk about that in a second but to get into this, 
I would really recommend that you don't jump from a reefer or dry van. Um, I believe it's 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 bad to to you know jump over these steps. Uh, you need some flatbed or step deck experience, and then specifically you need oversize and preferably overweight step deck experience. And that's what I did. I got a, I had a three axle step deck and st I started doing some heavy loads like 60,000 pounds, 65,000 pounds and I started doing oversized loads, you know, and that gives you uh, confidence, you know, to switch to the bigger and better stuff. And then eventually I bought that uh, orange Kaufman trailer that I had 50 and I started with a 55 ton and the only reason I bought a 55 ton because it was not, uh, uh, that was my first trailer from Kaufman. I, I never knew that brand existed, so I did not trust them too much. So actually I was looking for a 50 ton, but a 55 ton seemed to, to, to make more sense in terms of resale. It's easier to sell because everybody looks for a 55 ton. And also the difference was only 3000 bucks between 50 and 55 and so i went with 55 but basically yeah like i said and i started with seven axles four axle mac three axle trailer but like i said all you need is a 45 even 45 ton uh, trailer as you saw from that little calculation you can you can start now to, that's the basic setup and i mentioned that yeah it's best to have some flatbed step deck experience um, uh, so uh, moving on two directions once you get some experience with flatbed step deck uh, you're facing a choice and there's two distinct directions in oversize or heavy hole like one you can go heavy and you like like the way I went with you know 55 60 ton multi axles you know big heavy loads basically my focus is weight because for me, I see that um, when the weight of the load is above, let's say, 70, even 70,000 pounds, there's less competition because most people have light trailers. Most people have 35 ton. Some people have 40 ton trailers, but 35 ton double drops are everywhere. But most of these guys just have a regular truck, three axle truck, two axle trailer. They cannot do, uh, you know, 70. But anyway, like 80 for me, when I see the number 80, I get excited 90 I get more excited because I know I can I can ask for more money because there's not that many trucks that can do this right so that's one direction one direction is go heavy trying to beat the competition but of course you don't want to be too heavy because then again that first formula right you become too heavy you cannot do regular loads and uh, all this thing by the way all this little presentation is for somebody like me not a big company, but somebody who wants to, you know, just one truck, one trailer, and you just want to do your own thing and be independent. So that's one direction, going heavy and doing big loads, and that's expensive. All these trailers are expensive, uh, like a 60 ton is a pretty expensive. 55 ton, of course, costs more money than a 50 ton. Uh, but that's just one direction. Another direction, and some people say that that one is actually preferable, you can make the same if not mo more money, is to go long and tall, right? So you get like an extendable trailer, you know, doesn't matter, 40 ton, 45 ton, 50 ton, um, and, and you start doing loads which are, which people cannot load on regular trailers, like 40 feet long, you know, 50 feet long, and uh, and something I don't know 13 feet tall you know and the weight can be I don't know 10,000 pounds let's say um, the, the the what an example that comes to mind is um, uh, like air conditioning units right these uh, they're very flimsy made out of that little you know very thin metal and they're super light but they're bulky they're huge you know and some of them uh, you really need an um, extendable trailer. Like for me personally, I decided not to go that route. I prefer something heavy. I don't like when my uh, my rig is, you know, 200 feet long. And one drawback here is that, you know, when you're traveling under permit, um, the longer you are and the heavier you are, the more money you have to pay for permits and escorts. 
like for example I'm in Michigan right now so uh, I can tell you that I was I've been looking into this and, and again all states are different but for example Michigan if you reach 90 feet 90 feet in length bumper to bumper you need one pilot or one escort and for me I just did that right coming from Indiana uh, she charged me dollar fifty a mile which was pretty decent but still that was like 450 bucks and I gave her a tip uh, so uh, but that's if you're 90 feet right and I was 96 if you're over 100 feet long you need two escorts so that's double the money right so instead of 450 it'll be 900 or even a thousand dollars so uh, even though you have a light load but when you become heavy long with these extendable trailers you know it's it can cost pretty much the same as when I have a heavy load because of course heavy loads uh, they also charge you money even though let's say you um, you know 80 feet long but if you have a, a big load then instead of let's say 100 bucks the per okay you don't need a uh, escort because they're not that long but the permit uh, some states they will charge you like ton per mile right so if you're above that 80,000 pounds um, gross they will charge you so much more extra per mile and so both of these uh, long and long and tall as I call it direction one and heavy and big direction two both of them can be very expensive in terms of uh, permits and that's the I would say two drawbacks of heavy haul is that uh, there's lots of expenses uh, because of this because of permits and escorts and the second the second uh, drawback is uh, how much time you lose you know especially with heavy loads uh, not so much with uh, long and tall but with heavy loads uh, DOT takes a long time to evaluate the route you know where you're going because they have to look at the bridges you know are you gonna destroy some roads you know like heavy loads take longer so like look at me right uh, well now it's a pandemic situation and it's summer so Ontario is super busy but I, su I submitted my permit on july 20th right so that was five days and now they're saying yesterday they said the processing time eight days but last week they said processing time was 14 days so i got lucky that now they're adding more staff but i know guys that were sitting for a month or three weeks waiting for a heavy hold permit again heavy so long and tall heavy so heavy you expect to spend more time sitting and recording videos for YouTube in your hotel room like that's what I'm doing now so those are two directions right and you have to decide for yourself which direction you want to go long and tall or heavy both of these are expensive but the basic one like I said the basic one just 45 50 ton with a four axle truck or regular truck with a single axle Jeep okay now, uh, why I was changing trailers? Why, sorry about that. Why I was changing trailers? This might give you an idea um, about, uh, about the specs. My first trailer, Kaufman. So what was wrong with it? Uh, first off, the uh, spacing in the back was 54 inches. I wanted to have 60 because then you can get more weight on the permit in many states. Even though 54 is better for the trailer, like the trailer is stronger when axles are closer together, but DOT and MTO in Canada, they don't care about your trailer, they care about the road. And for the road, it's better when your axles are further apart, right, the bridge formula. And so 60 inches in many places is better than 54 axle spacing. And that was one problem. Problem two with the Kaufman was, um, I wanted to add one more axle again for heavier loads and I did not like the connections in the back those eyes they're tiny they were tiny and of course if I if I were to add one more axle I would have to go with the flip axle from Kaufman and I would have to use their connectors and everybody was telling me that judging by the size of those eyes the pins would be just like tiny and everybody was saying how can you you know use such small pins and, and eyes for a flip axle so and I said no I don't want to do that uh, but I still wanted a fourth axle and then 
Problem area number three of that trailer was uh, it was too tall. It was 24 inches loaded and that's way too tall. Now I would never buy a trailer that's higher than 18 inches loaded. No matter what trailer it is, like 55, 60 ton, I don't know. I need 18 or lower. And I'll tell you why. What's going on here? I think I'm getting some updates probably from... Uh, from... Uh, no? I thought I was getting updates. I signed up for updates from FedEx. Um, but I told the lady downstairs, I said, you will see four huge boxes just... And she says, you want them up at your at your room? I said, no, they're like 136 pounds. I said, just tell them to drop it here and I can come down and sign for it. But I put my room number on the address. Um, <laughs> my two phones are beeping. And so that's why I changed, uh, I changed the Kaufman. Because, yeah, it was too tall and also basically it was... When, you, when your trailer is too tall, and 24 is way too tall, first off, you cannot do uh, tall loads, right? Because you don't want to be too much above like 14 feet overall, you know? Again, depending depending where you live, like west or east, in the west, you have more, they're more lenient towards the height. <laughs> but in the east, it's more important to be low. Oh, okay, hold on. Finally, we have a... Tracking update. All right, scheduling for delivery. Uh, da, 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 da. What do I have here? In transit. Scheduled delivery Tuesday, end of day. So basically, they're saying that this thing, these four packages are status or oh, on FedEx vehicle for delivery. Yes. So I think I should see it sometime before uh, lunch, but uh, the checkout is lunchtime. So I was. If I don't see it before lunchtime, my plan was just to sit in the truck. My my semi is outside without the trailer. I would just sit with uh, you know in the truck. Uh, so so anyway, and and the other problem with your trailer is too tall is that it's very difficult to load because the ramps are so steep. You know, so ideally you want to carry some big timbers and put so those timbers. You know, like and let's say if this is your trailer, right? And the ramps are too steep, so, uh, and then, you know, if you're loading like an excavator, they're gonna go like this and just smash on your trailer. So what you do is you just put a couple of timbers, like some 10 feet or two and a half meters, three meters away from the trailer so that the excavator goes on the timber and then it goes on the trailer, you know? But you don't wanna mess with it all the time, like, because you can get a trailer which is um, like, instead of being like this, you know and then having ramps in here that you can that you you have to fall down this way right like and this is very tall but you can get a trailer where this front is uh, is like this you know and you don't have a ramp and so the, these are much easier to load uh, when it's the front of the trailer like the first three four feet are like this you know are cut at an angle and that's what I didn't like about the Kaufman. And then, of course, it, it had a crack, but they gave me a new trailer because of that. But eventually, I switched to Fontaine uh, because Fontaine was, I think, it was it was a better quality because they used the better steel, so it was lighter. That's the first thing I noticed of the 55. Sorry, 55 ton Fontaine was lighter than 55 ton Kaufman, and of course, it was a drop side rail. Uh, so it was like about, they said uh, 14 and a half inches, but that's with full load, uh, 55 tons. Like it's hard to see that because, uh, again, you know, it all depends on your axles, right? So I only had four axle truck and three axle trailer, and then I added one more axle. And so you can never reach the potential of the trailer. Let's say uh, if it's a 55 ton trailer, it's almost impossible to put 55 tons on it because you cannot have the axles you know and in the Fontaine uh, case uh, and they always push you towards a heavier trailer than what you need so let's say if I want to do 110 for that you need a tandem jeep in the front 
tandem Jeep and, and you need a booster, let's say three plus one, three axles plus one, right? Like what I have now, the spreader. But Fontaine does not offer uh, a neck like a neck extension long enough that you, so that you can use a tandem Jeep, right? On a 55 ton, uh, the only neck extension you can get from Fontaine is 23 inches. And so they only give you 101 inch basic neck, base neck, and then you put that flip box 23 inches. So your neck becomes 124. And I had that one just because uh, you need that with loads anywhere like from 80,000 pounds and up, you need that long neck so you can move the trailer closer to the truck. So this helps you not to overload the trailer and you move the weight on your front axle, like in my truck, right? I have 20,000 pound axle, uh, so it helps a lot. And so you cannot do this heavy stuff with 101 inch neck. And again, more about this in a second, uh, like a problems with my current trailer. Uh, and so, because they only allow you 124 overall on the Fontaine, again, we're talking about 55 ton, you cannot use a tandem Jeep. So, okay, so, okay, I want to do 110,000 pounds, the same 55, but I know from all these rules, you know, you need two more axles, right? You cannot do it with eight axles. Uh, how do we do that? Oh, you need a 60 ton. Why do you need a 60 ton? Well, on a 60 ton, you can get an 83 inch flip box and then you have 184, right? But but just to, in case you guys missed it, so let's say you have a four axle truck, right? And you have a four axle trail, right? So what I had, I had this and I had that 55 ton, so eight axles. And let's just say, and I, I wasn't even getting a full 20K per axle um, because some places don't like super single tires that I have, like for example, Ontario, only allows 10 kilograms or 22 pounds per one millimeter of the tire width. So anyway, so Ontario looks at my truck and they say, okay, the maximum we can give you is 18,700 on the steer and 18,700 pounds on your pusher axle because of your, your tires are more narrow than um, compared to four tires, let's say 11 inch, you know, in width. But let's just say, but that's only like one or two jurisdictions. But let's say, so let's say I'm, I have eight axles, right? And my front is uh, 20,000 pounds. So in theory, in theory, I can do 80 times, uh, eight times 20, right? I can do 160,000 gross, right? And um, hold on, let me see if I can. Yeah, so I can do 100. 160 gross and my weight with a 50 with a 55 ton was uh, 53 same same truck same trailer I was 53,000 pounds so I could do 107 right that's the absolute maximum with the and plus don't forget that many places will not give you 80,000 in here because you don't have a spreader so they wanted to have a spreader by in here uh, but just eight axles you know so anyway, so eight axle, it's not enough to do 110. Because of course, okay, you can do 107 in theory, but then in real life, it'd be like more 103, 105. So to do 110, you need a tandem Jeep. To, to get a tandem Jeep on a, on, a, on a Fontaine, you need a super long neck, like 184, right? And to, to do that, you need a, you need a 60 ton trailer. And that's how all these manufacturers, they kind of always push you towards heavier trailer. Because of course, this way they make more money. But uh, yeah, so uh, they always wanted to spend more money. But that's why I changed, uh, but because I, I had eight, like what, uh, we are on the topic of why I was changing trailers, right? So uh, because I only had eight axles, so a lot of my loads were light loads, right? I was doing basic like, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 pounds. And then I would do 90,000 pounds. I think my the heaviest load I did was that uh, 100,000 pound uh, uh, machine, like that garbage processor. I think it was like 100, 
and 102 but that's pretty much maximum you can do on eight axles right like uh, 50 even though it's a 55 ton but 100,000 that's your max you know so so pretty much which which bring us back to the topic of being light so if I had a 50 ton trailer I could have do more weight because a 50 ton is by probably lighter than 55 ton by two three thousand pounds but Again, looking at Fontaine, you cannot get a neck like on a 50 ton. They don't even give you any any neck extension on a 50 50 ton. You only can get 101 inch. So basically, you want to do 50 ton. They're telling you no. You should buy a 55 ton. You want to do 55 ton loads like 110. They say no. You, now you need a 60 ton because otherwise we're not going to give you a neck long enough to do the uh, to use the tandem Jeep, right? But in my case, uh, like I really like that trailer. It was light. It was super strong. This 55 ton Fontaine uh, dropside rail. But eventually, because I'm in Canada, right? So we don't have as many loads as uh, guys in, in US, and we are restricted to running across the border. So for me, it's important to be able to do all kinds of loads, including small loads. And that dropside rail, uh, you know, with the with the with the center raised right like so this this was the trailer right so if you look at the trailer this was the center the center was 23 inches tall over here they were saying it was supposed to be 14 14 and a half inches on the sides of the trailer but i never saw that because to reach that you need to have a really heavy load 55 tons which like i, I mentioned it's impossible to haul on 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 um eight axles so in reality all i saw was 16 inches which is still pretty good you know and um and so yeah because of this i could not do loads where let's say some kind of a machine where it has tracks right and if the tracks are close together or the wheels are too close together and this thing was uh, 50 one inch wide i think so if the wheels are too close together i i, I was not able to load this um unless of course you use like all kinds of boards you know but uh but um uh, wheels or or tracks that are too close was one problem and then the other problem was the the um the ground clearance right so the difference here as you can see was about eight inches right and so eight inches so you need a mach like for the load or machine or something to go here uh, especially in the front where all those big hooks are uh, you need the machine to be able to go to be higher than eight inches and i remember once i loaded like a dozer and it was the tr it was a small dozer and so the tracks were so close uh, we had maybe like an inch on each side of that raised center uh, but surprisingly now I'm uh, I'm warming up again to the idea of drop side rail uh, Because now I don't do small loads, you know now I have a 60 ton trailer Which is now, my empty weight instead of 53 became 60 uh, When I bought this trailer And of course I did not expect that the 60 ton with everything the same with the same four axles compared to the four axle 55 ton the weight increased by 7,000 pounds. And so, as you can tell, like if I have the same four axle truck, four axle trailer, right? And let's say you get 160,000, let's say, like in theory, right? Whereas before I was 53,000, so, and I could do 107 in theory, now I'm 60,000 pounds, so now I can only do 100,000 in theory. You see, that's why it's so important to be light. And so, no, there's nothing wrong with this trailer. It's so heavy because it's designed for multi-axle operation. And that's why, of course, so I lost weight. I lost the payload capacity because the trailer is so heavy, which, again, I didn't expect. I thought it would be like maybe two, 3,000 pounds difference, right? But 7,000, that's a lot. And so that's why I started right away looking, you know, I, I, I thought I would, I would, uh, uh tackle the jeep and the stinger later on but i saw that I, I was i was so heavy so that's the thing i i got interested in but uh, yeah why i switched from a drop side rail to this one 
that was the main reason right because i was doing light loads and the drop side was in the way so i wanted to get a level deck level deck but uh so now we're coming to the area uh, where i'm talking about my trailer like i'm looking at my trailer now and there's four problem areas And that might, you know, talking about this might give you an idea of what you want to see in your in your trailer. So first off, my trailer, and that's just because it's Fontaine, they don't do custom necks. Uh, problem number one is the neck. Like I have a 101 inch, right, the base neck, and then I have an 83 inch neck extension, and I have a 36 inch neck extension. Now that 36 inch should work should work fine when I don't have the Jeep, right? So then I be 36 plus 101, 137. So that would give me a, you know lots of room on the truck where to move the fifth wheel. So even though it's a bit too too long, but it's great for uh, for just to move the weight on the truck. Without this, without that um, neck extension, the trailer will be overloaded or your drives will be overloaded. Okay. So very important. And then when I have a Jeep, I, I use the big neck, 83 inch, so it becomes 184, the swing radius, right? So the problem is that I'm supposed to constantly switch them, right? Because just 101, it's too short. Like I can only do maybe like a light load, I don't know, 40, 50, 60,000 pounds. Uh, but after that, I need to be able to move my fifth wheel. So I need ideally like a friend of mine bought a 55 ton and they built him a base neck single piece 125 inches 125 and then it has connectors on the front and he um he can hook up 40 or 50 inch flip box and you see that's perfect so you have your flip box or neck extension on the top and so when you don't need the jeep you just use the base neck right 125 so you can still move your fifth wheel pretty far forward and then when you need the Jeep, you put that thing down. So you don't have to mess with these 20 flip boxes, right? So it's just, an, it it works, but in reality, like I just put that 36 inch flip box away and I'm not using it. Like if I don't have a Jeep, I'm still using 83 because it's just, it's too much hassle, you know, to change these flip boxes all the time because they're pretty heavy. The 36 inch flip box is about 550 pounds and this 83 inches, 1450 pounds. So you need a crane or a forklift and it's not easy because there's spins, you know, they, everything rotates. So that's one thing I really hate on this trailer is that the base neck is too short. And uh, that's something for you to think about. So 115 even might work, 115, 120, 125 inches on the base neck plus the neck extension. So that's one problem area on my trailer and there's not much I can do about it unless I buy a new neck or something, which is, you know, thousands of dollars. Problem two of the existing trailer is uh, the length of the deck. Uh, more and more often I run into situations where 26 feet I have is not enough. Um, and it's not just a matter of uh, fitting the load, but also when your deck is short, what happens is that exactly what happens with this load, with this crane, they have to put it closer to the rear, right? And of course, then you have a higher chance of overloading the trailer. Whereas uh, again, with this crane, if my deck was at least 28 feet, I would be able to move it forward and I would be able to spread the weight more equally between the truck and the trailer. And so long neck is uh, um, very important, especially for heavy loads. It just gives you that, you know, option of balancing the loads properly. Uh, even though when the load, let's say 20 feet long, but still longer deck is, is better for heavy stuff. And that's why if you look at the uh, specs of like a 65 or 70 ton trailer, you will very rarely see the standard deck less than 27 or 28 feet you know they always give you longer deck when you deal with heavy loads and for me this is my category now right i do these see i did 107,000 pounds now this is 120 i need longer deck just even for weight distribution you know and um, that's actually easy to fix because my trailer is modular so all i have to do is just add a 
deck insert, right? So you open, you take those bolts out with these two huge wrenches I got, and you put some boards under it, and then you hire a guy with a forklift or crane, and you put that deck insert in there. And for my trail, a Fontaine offers five foot insert and 10 foot insert, you know? So 26 plus five is 31, three one, 31. And 31 would be super useful for, you know, for weight distribution and for longer loads like cranes, like three or four axle cranes. Uh, I would love to be somewhere around 30 feet. You know, if I were to buy this five foot insert, I would just keep it there. And just uh, when I'm empty, just run with a tandem in the back, just, you know, disconnect the booster and uh, so, so that I'm not too long. Um, but then, of course, you might need a permit, you know, depending on the on the jurisdiction. So I would love to buy that, but uh, problem number three with the current trailer is the deck height, deck height. So if I buy the standard five foot deck insert, it'll be the same 22 inches loaded deck height. And I wanna get lower. And uh, one thing about, again, about this trailer, I can get a replacement deck, you know, so if I if I overlook the problems with the with the neck that I don't like that it's 101 inch but I do heavy loads anyway, um, then I can I can get uh, a third party or if I win a lottery I can get a Fontaine replacement deck and I can get a lower deck and I can get a uh, longer deck like 28 feet and then buy a deck insert right so then the length problem is solved and the height problem is solved and why height is important uh, this is what I learned recently you want to be somewhere around this number overall like if you're from the west if you like forget about this if you're like from western Canada western US uh, you don't have to be afraid of this but here in the east and Canada you don't want to be too much over this overall right and so look at this Right now I'm 22 inches loaded deck height, right? So that's one foot, 10 inches, which means that to get to this, I, the maximum load is 12 feet, five inches tall, okay? Now, that's not very good because a lot of loads are taller than that. So let's say if I go, if I get a deck or trailer which is 18 inches loaded, right, that doesn't seem like a big difference but that's four inches lower so now instead of 12.5 I can do 12.9 to get to the same 14.3 right 12.9 that's already pretty good so if I get uh, something like what I had before a drop side rail let's say 16 you you gain two more inches so now you can do 12.11 you know and I think it really, it's really great to, to like my focus right now is to be able to do something up to 13 feet in, in height. And um, it's not easy to do with a 60 or 65 ton trailer because they become very heavy. You know, in order to make them this low, uh, they have to add much more metal, make it like a wider beams, right? Uh, but just that gives you an idea. So let's say if you if you go with a plan A, like the basic setup, right? Uh, I would look for something like if it, let's say 45 ton trailer, I would look for something definitely, you know, I don't know, 14, 16 inches. Like you can get like a mini deck. They call a mini deck trailer. 14 inches loaded with four inch clearance. Okay, 16 with six, but that's still pretty good, you know. So you can make a lot of money with a trailer like that. Uh, and the last problem on my trailer uh, is the uh, axles in the back, right? Uh, just like as I'm running into problems with the length of the deck, I've been running into issues with not having enough axles in the back. Like, um, and I was paying attention to what trailers people pull. Like I go, to, I started going to Western Canada, right? After I bought the Jeep and the Stinger, which is a good thing because now my geography, uh, geography of my loads increase. So it's easier for me to find loads. Uh, but what if the funny thing I noticed is that you don't see that many, 
you don't see that many two plus two trailers like in the back two plus two so it seems like this is like an old design that yeah it was popular before you know two plus two plus two tandem uh, jeep and two plus two in the back but nowadays uh, first off loads become bigger and heavier but secondly a lot of places they have uh, seasonal uh, restrictions right like alberta uh, there's not much you can do with a two plus two all the way up to june 16th because they have these spring restrictions and that's why over there mostly what you see is if people do lighter loads they have the same uh, they actually most of them run the same four axles but they run three plus one because it's easier to back you know it's easy if you only need three axles you just disconnect that thing you have three axles whereas two plus two is more work so three plus one is more more practical when you when you need to change the setup right and you need to back uh, but if you want to get more weight you need one more axle and that's why you over there you you either see three plus one for practical reasons instead of two plus two or you see three plus two but basically most people have a tri them trailer and then they add whether either a single axle booster or a tandem booster right and of course that's the territory already of a 65 ton trailer and i really i, I really i don't want a 65 ton because i know it'll be even heavier than what i have now like ideally i want to have a 60 ton trailer with a try them try them modular trailer with a tandem booster so three plus two and a 60 ton not a 65 ton then it's going to be should be just slightly heavier than my trailer like one axle is about three thousand pounds right so um so if my weight now is seventy two thousand truck trailer jeep stinger then with that trail i'll be 75 but at least it's not like seven or eight or ten thousand pound difference right and so 60 ton three plus two and then the neck like ideal right i want a 125 inch base neck with a 40 45 50 inch flip box and uh, 28 feet in the well and i want to be at 18 inches or lower and i want to have a five foot deck insert so so then i can do you see with 18 i can do loads up to 12 9 and uh, 28 plus 5 32 so i can do some big cranes right and three plus two in the back i'm no longer afraid of uh, loads that are not you know don't have the center of mass in the middle that put too much weight on the back or too much too much on the rear um so that's pretty that pretty much covers what i, I wanted to talk about uh so basic setup seven axles you need some flatbed step deck experience to start after that you choose two directions either direction one uh, long and tall or direction two uh, big and heavy like the way i went and then i talked about why i was changing trailers to to them to show you guys what was my thinking and of course the the main idea is always to make more money right you want to make more money you want to have more loads loads that pay better and that's one thing i'm always i'm constantly monitoring is uh, which loads pay more money you know if i see a big amount on the board i'm going okay why are they paying so much money for this and, and usually when they pay a lot of money it's either something super heavy like hundred sixty thousand pounds like the, now there's a load on the board or it's something that requires uh extendable trailer right and again so direction one long and tall direction direction two big and heavy and then so yeah I, why i change trailers and uh, problem areas with my trailer and so that's where we're going yeah somebody was saying oh you're selling your trailer what you're getting out of heavy hole no if anything i'm getting deeper into heavy hole and uh, so if i cannot trade this in because it's still too early uh i would just keep it and i would change the deck because i i can use uh somebody like temisco you know like a local trailer manufacturer and i can they can get me a, a replacement deck and they can build you any kind of deck so let's say uh, i would go back to even drop side rail because i don't do small loads anymore and make it like 15 16 inches on the sides make it 28 and then buy a deck insert and then we can start hauling some cranes 
Uh, not much I can do about the axles. If I don't change the trailer, I cannot just change the bogies, right? I talked to them about this. I talked to Hale Trailer and said, hey, can I just give you my bogey, like my four axles, and you give me three plus two bogey? And in theory, they can do that, but they say, well, what are we going to do with this bogey? Like, we won't be able to sell it, right? So they will not take it if they cannot sell it. And so... Uh, they wanted to buy the entire new trailer just because of that even though I'm pretty sure the only thing that's different between my trailer and this new Fontaine They call it 60 ton 3 plus 2 capable whereas mine is only uh, 2 plus 2 or 3 plus 1 capable right that now they have this new model which can support one more axle but they don't want to do uh, bogey change they just want They just want people to buy a brand new trailer but what I can do now is uh, as, a, as a kind of like a compensate, if I, you know, keep this trailer and I can, I, I'm definitely adding the deck length and I'm dropping the height for sure. If I keep this trailer, I'm changing the deck, guaranteed 100%. But another thing, because I cannot do much about axles, what I can do is, one thing I did not talk about is tires. And tires can be very important because some places... If you have wider tires than, let's say, 11 inch, like regular, right, 275 millimeter or 11, 11R, you can get more weight, you know, up to your axle. Let's say, I know Michigan, so I was able to get 24,000 here per axle on a quad with no stinger, and I have 275 millimeter tires. If I had 12 inch or 3 or 5 millimeter tires i know that i could have gotten 25,000 or even more but actually my axles are only rated for 25 so i could have gotten 100,000 pounds on the back if i had uh wider tires and so that's one thing i can do is i can switch to uh like you know if i keep this trailer right uh in order to increase the payload i can just my tires are getting old so I can just change using the same 22.5. I can just find tires that work on 8.25 inch rims. That's what I have. I have 8.25 inch 22.5 rims. And you can get tires that are 12 R 22.5. And like some of these will require a 9 inch rim. But some of them will say 8.25. And that's what I, I've been doing some uh, research. And so basically until I get into a position where I can trade for a five axle three plus two trailer, that's what I can do. So change the deck, uh, add the deck insert and change ties on the back to give me more payload. And just one last number I, I, I'm going to leave you with why, why uh, tire width is important. Um, I'm running out of paper, uh, but let's just say like it's, it's fresh in my mind nine kilograms is uh saskatchewan hold on let me just see here jeez nine times 2.2 .2. 1980 see i still remember so nine kilos or 19.8 pounds one millimeter of the tire that's the maximum uh, Saskatchewan and Manitoba right so if you have so 19.8 if you have a regular 275 millimeter tire right you get 54.45 per tire or you have four tires you get 21.780 what that doesn't doesn't sound right so 275 times 4 times 9 times 2.2 yeah 21780 so that's how much you can do on a, on a one axle 21780 that's the maximum under the permit right now check this out if you put a 305 tire which is 12 12 inches times 4 times 19.8 Saskatchewan will give you 24,156 for axle or if you have two like a tandem right let's say if I run there three two plus two I can put 48 so let's say if I run two plus two like after I fix my spreader right and I go like this I can put 48 and 48 in here right 
Whereas if I have regular ties, I can do 21, 21, 21, 21. So there's a real difference in many places. There's a real difference in how much weight uh, you can haul. And so that's, that can be a solution for somebody like me who cannot just add an axle. And yeah, and just somebody was saying, why you cannot just add an axle, like a flip axle to my trailer since it's a tandem, right? It's a tandem modular trailer. The problem is uh, I double check with Fontaine. I didn't want to do something that can, you know, jeopardize the safety. Uh, and most importantly, I wanted to make sure the trailer can support this. And when I asked Fontaine, they said, no, your trailer is not three plus two capable. Your trailer can only do two axles, three, four in a row, two plus one, three plus one, two plus two. That's it. And that's why they want me to change to this new model, which they call three plus two capable, right? Um, and those are my thoughts. I hope you have found this information useful. If you're trying to get into heavy haul or, you, or you're stuck in one spot and you're trying to see where you can go from there. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you later.